Digging into the timeline of all this, let's meet our four major characters for this story. First, Avista, our local utility company. It's investor owned, meaning it's a private for profit company. That's actually pretty rare. Most utility companies in America are run by the government. Second, Hydro One. This is the Toronto based company that wants to buy Avista. It's also investor owned, but, and this is important, 47% of its shares are owned by the government of Ontario. Third, Doug Ford. He's a conservative politician in Ontario, brother of the late Rob Ford. He leads the Progressive Conservative Party. And fourth, the Washington Utilities and Transportation Commission, or UTC. This is the agency that regulates companies like Avista. They're pretty powerful here. They can approve or reject mergers and even restrict rate hikes. Okay, so here's what happened. September 2017, Avista and Hydro One formally apply to merge. Specifically, Hydro One wants to buy Avista. Avista would keep its structure and name, but become a subsidiary. March 2018, things are looking pretty good. The companies have met with UTC staff and come to an agreement. They've hashed out a bunch of details and proposed ways to make sure ratepayers benefit from the merger, like providing rate credits. Not long after, the agreement is presented to the actual committee. Now, the UTC committee had some concerns, namely Hydro One being 47% owned by Ontario. Could that mean that the whims and wishes of Canadian politicians could affect the future of Avista here in Washington? Well, the CEO of Hydro One assured the committee it wouldn't. He said the province of Ontario had, quote, been exemplary in their behavior in not involving themselves in the business of the organization. But he was very, very wrong. June 2018, Ontario has its provincial elections. The right-leaning PC party gained a staggering 49 seats and took over the parliament. This is where Doug Ford comes in. Ford became the premier of Ontario, and one of his campaign promises, ousting the entire board of Hydro One. And that is exactly what he did. Within weeks of the election, the entire board and the CEO of the company resigned. This, of course, rang major alarm bells over at the UTC. They were initially going to give their decision in August. After this election, though, they decided to extend that to December. In October, the UTC held new hearings, grilling both companies about the influence of the Ontario government. They pointed out that the firing of the board resulted in stock losses and credit downgrades for both Hydro One and Avista. The CEOs themselves even admitted the recent political events were not in the best interest of their companies. Then, December 5th, the UTC has their decision. It's a no. They rule the merger, quote, fails to provide a net benefit to Avista's customers. They don't mince words, providing paragraphs of harsh assessment that basically boil down to Ontario politics could too easily hurt Avista. By rejecting the merger, UTC basically kills the deal. Finally, today, Avista and Hydro One announced they'll be appealing this decision. So what happens now? Well, first, the actual appeal will be filed. Then it's up to the committee. They can decide to hear new arguments. They can choose to revise their decision outright. They can decide to reject the petition, or they can just ignore it, in which case after 20 days, their original decision just stands. We'll know by the end of the week exactly what Avista and Hydro One are basing that appeal on. But given the firm wording of the rejection, the argument will likely have to be pretty dramatic for anything to change.